this is stage three of the procedure to collimate an a RC type telescope. Now what you can see there is the ring pattern being projected out of the front of the telescope and what our objective is here, what we're trying to achieve is a perfectly concentric series of rings. Not only that, we also want, and this might look, look slightly elliptical because I'm standing at an angle if I stand right in front of it, of course, I'm standing in front of the pattern and you can't see. What we're looking for here is a perfectly concentric series of rings. And we're looking for this center shadow, which is the secondary shadow, to be perfectly centered with respect to the rings. So what you can do is measure these with a ruler. And what you need to make sure is that they're the same size, the same, this is the same distance across here to there as it is from there to there and from there to there. It needs to be the same. Now, <clears throat> there's some people who may think, well, okay, what we have did in step two was calibrate or collimate the secondary mirror to project concentric rings onto the primary. So surely that's my collimation complete. Well, let's remember, this is a RC type of telescope, a Richard Chrétien. It's not a schmidt Cassegrain. It's not an SCT telescope. This type of telescope has got two adjustable mirror surfaces, unlike an SCT, which has one adjustable. Remember, on the SCT, you just adjust the secondary. With this type of telescope, because it's different types of mirror surfaces, they're hyperbolic surfaces, we need to adjust the primary at the back as well. Which means that even if this is accurate and it's projecting perfectly concentric rings onto the back, that does not mean that these rings here will be likewise concentric. Not at all. Because what can still happen, even though this is adjusted perfectly, is that that back mirror could be tint tilted with respect to this. If that back mirror was tilted with respect to the secondary, even though those rings are perfect at the back, what we would see here would be incomplete rings here, or it may be that this center shadow here of the secondary is offset from the center. And you will also find that you could have incomplete rings around the outside edge as well. So, Let's say that you're looking at your mirror, and you, sorry, you're looking at your, um, your projections like I am here. You're looking at them and they were wrong. What, what would you do about it? Well, what would you do is you would leave that well alone, because we've now adjusted that, remember. And we would have to adjust our primary mirror. Now, the primary mirror, let me just zoom out a little bit so we can see is adjusted by sets of bolts here, sets of Allen keys here, there, and around the back. Allen nuts, sorry. And the way we do that is we loosen off the silver one, that's just a captive one, and then we, we twist or turn the, um, the smaller one there, all the time looking at that pattern on the wall. So what we want to do is adjust these bolts so that we get that pattern perfectly round, like we can see there, okay? And we wanna do that for all focus positions. So what the position where we end up, we want a situation whereby those rings fade in and out, or the outer one and the inner one fades in and out, so I can see that outer one coming in now, look, and I, it's gone again. That wants to be the same all the way around the circumference of the rings. What you don't want is a situation whereby you try to fo you, you move the focuser and the top portion of the ring comes in, but the bottom one doesn't. Yeah, we want all of it to come in at approximately the same focuser position. Now, of course, now we've adjusted that mirror what's going to happen? We've now tilted 
this as well. We've now ruined the position that we made earlier on with this focuser plate. Because now what we've done is moved the focuser. Because remember, on this design, everything is attached, the focuser is attached to the primary mirror. But we've just uh, adjusted that primary mirror in order to get those rings concentric. So we need to go back to step one again now and recolumate this again with the straight laser. Now you will find it doesn't take you anywhere near as long to do that on the second or even indeed the third time of doing this. Remember, we adjusted the, the focuser first, then we did the secondary second, now we're doing the primary third. And in actual fact, in many cases, you don't even need to do step three. The primary mirror is nearly always crack on anyway. It's nearly always accurate. But if we have to adjust this primary mirror at all in order to get, in order to get those rings that you can see there concentric, then we need to do steps one, two, and three again because we moved the primary. Now that sounds like a real pain, but in actual fact, it's much, much quicker on the second and the third iteration. So again, what we're trying to do here, or not trying to do, <laughs> what we are doing here is getting that pattern perfectly concentric on the wall. So following this procedure, steps one, two, and three, okay, step one, cent centering the focuser, step two, projecting a concentric series of rings on that primary, and step three, ensuring that the rings coming from the primary are perfectly central with, sorry, perfectly circular with the central ob, um, shadow of the secondary central within those rings, we have got a calibrated telescope. Now, <clears throat> what I can also tell you is that if you do this and you get this accurate, then you decide to use your Cheshire and have a look at the result, you will almost certainly be absolutely spot on. So this is a highly accurate, highly visible way where you get immediate feedback of turning these screws and turning the screws at the back. You, there's an immediate feedback. And I find it personally to be a very accurate mechanism to collimate an RC telescope. Very accurate, very accurate indeed. I hope you found that useful. It's, um, it's an interesting technique. And again, a guy, there's a guy in the Netherlands, Jeffrey Youngmans, who put me onto this mechanism. Again, it uses this Aoi Glatter laser collimator with the holographic attachment. I suppose any other laser collimator which has a, which has a holographic attachment would work equally well. The only thing I would remind you of is that you must ensure that your collimation device is accurate. If it isn't accurate, or if it's wrong, then you are, set, you are deliberately um, putting a further error into your telescope because this is wrong and it needs to be right, which is why it's worth it, in my opinion, to spend a little bit more and get a really accurate device like this. It will last you for years and years. It lasts you essentially forever. Okay, I hope, that, I hope you found that useful. I hope you found it helpful. I hope you like this method. I, you probably tell from my enthusiasm in my voice that I'm, I most certainly do like this method. It's very, very accurate. And, you know, we, we don't get a lot of time out under the stars. Certainly we don't in the UK. The weather is so bad that, you know, you want your kit to be nice. You want it to be accurate. You want to derive the maximum amount of pleasure out of it. And to do that, you need it to be accurately collimated. So your pictures or your views are as good as they could possibly be. All right. That's me done now. I hope you found it useful and uh, we'll see you on the next video. Cheers.